made of clay cause you're in my head Let's drive through city lights and take it slow mm-hmm. Breathe in and scream it's loud I'm about to love, I'm about to love Let's ahead And today is gonna be a very good day. We gonna wrap it up for 2022. But I just wanna say thank you for everybody who has been following me on this journey that I've been doing with this podcast, with my music, with everything that I started last year, you know, cause it's been a long road. It's been a long road, but we get there. The journey just starting. But welcome back to Obi's world. You know, we get into it, we real cut through and deep, you know. But I definitely want to say go ahead and check out the network for where you at network and make sure that y'all subscribe to all the channels that's out there too. We got some good channels out there in the city of Baltimore. You feel me? Show some love. We got, listen, we got the hottest businesses that's going to be popping. You know what I mean? That's really going to get established this year. You got about 20 of them. (laughs) I got like 20 of them. So, you know, we grinding, man. What you do New Year's, man? New Year's? You, what, 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 I was did sick. you hear them gunshots? Nah. What, you was asleep? Nah, I was at work this time. You ain't hear the... <laughs> Niggas had some shit. Nah, I was in Randall's town. Damn, so you ain't even really do nothing. I was sick. Oh. You know this little buzz that they got going around and stuff had me on mic. <laughs> Damn. Chill, government, give us some, man. Let me leave. Oh, they been, been hitting us with shit back to back to back to back. But you wanna know what's crazy? I'm asymptomatic to COVID. Like, I, I'm a carrier, but I can't get it. So you like a superhero? I guess you can say that. <laughs> I can care, like, I'll get it, yeah. but I won't show symptoms of it. And I can, even if I get around you, I may not know I had COVID, but... If I get around you and you're not asymptomatic, I could give it to you. Man, I done had that shit twice, man. I thought I was it was Jesus the first time. I'm one of the I'm one of the Jesus Christ. Keep keep it going. I'm one of the good ones, you know. I'm so glad that I never got COVID. Thank God, because listen, I heard that COVID be putting you out. Like I heard it be putting people out, and I had. Too much going on this year to be out of the loop, out of the count. Well, last year, because we in a whole new year. So, so what was your your highlight of 2022? What was your highlights? My highlights, I have to say, like, my biggest highlight would actually have been me dropping my first song. You feel me? Like, that was, like, a big accomplishment for me, like, for everybody who knows me, I've been singing in the church since I was a little one. But my mom has been always on me like, come on, get in the studio. You got a really good voice. You can do it. You know how to write. You know how to do this. You know how to do that. I'm like, I understand all that, but she's What was and your I, first song? Do You was my very first song that has been dropped. But I did record Body first. That was your first was, song? Body? Mm-hmm. For real? Hey, listen, man. I was in the studio when she did that. I didn't know that was your first. That was my first time recording. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Natural, man. You're natural, man. Man, listen. I tell you, I come in the studio, so it's, it's, it's crazy because even when we did the second song, like, I know I had it. It was, like, easy. Do You it was very easy. But at the same sense, it was just like, listen. You got to get this because if you don't get this, like, you're going to mess up a really good song. Like, it, I just be putting a lot of pressure on myself when I get in the studio. And I be freaking myself out sometimes. But then I get in the studio and I feel like, you know, I'm at home. Like, my dad used to have, like, a home studio when we was kids. And he used to write songs all the time. Like, and we would sit up there and sing them inside the little studio with the, <laughs> it was like a closet. Yeah, you Had it decked out. And I was just like, bro. You don't understand, like, it's different being in your home studio and then being in the actual studio because you, like, kind of a little more freaked out. But after I got in there, I felt like I was at home. And my mom, like, 
she always been on me, like, get in the studio, you can do this, da, da, da. I'm like, mm, I don't know. Because everybody know me. I do dance, I model, I own businesses. It's too it's too much. I can't be the jack of all trades now. I got to master one thing and then move on to the next. But at the same sense, I was just like, you know what? I, I want to give it a try. And I did it. And so far, it's been doing pretty good. Shout out to mom for that push, man. That's that's lit. No, really. That's really lit. And my mom's like my biggest critic. She'll tell me if she don't like something. My mom ain't like every other mom. She'd be like, no, I don't like it. But when she heard body, she liked it. And she was just like, she kept saying, she was just like, you need something that's gonna. And now when she heard do you? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I can't. Yeah. She won't give this song a break. Yeah. Like, it's on repeat in her car. Like she we are, we almost at 20k plays, you feel me? On already. Our team, you know, yeah, man, so, yeah, man. Less than two. She's a natural. Less than one month. She's Three a natural, weeks. man. It's been out since December 12th. That's crazy. Man, I'm looking forward to cooking up, man. I'm looking forward to creating some, some, some shit, man, for real. 2023, man. And shout out to Speedy for going ahead and making my courses for me because I'm bad. Listen, I'm good at writing, but I'm bad at putting all my thoughts together. So I need like a baseline to go from. That's cool. The biggest artists do the same thing. You feel yeah. I me? Mean? The biggest artists, the Beyonce's, the Rihanna's, they got, the, you know, they got people that help put that shit together. It's just about making some hot shit. Yeah. Long as it's some hot shit, you know what I mean? Like, do what you got to do, you feel I me? Mean? So, yeah. That's it, man. You had your, uh, your, your your babies. Yeah. My second highest moment was having my second son. Lord, he came by surprise, though. Like, it was, it was kind of, it was different. I was not expecting to have another kid so soon, but I, I'm glad that I did because I got it out the way and I got it on my system and it's not happening again. That's it. I'm done. Uh-huh. I'm done. But I'm glad that my kids is close in age. They'll be close. Yeah, so. you felt like the second time was easier. It was more. You knew what you knew what was coming around the corner now. Yes and no, only because you know when you have your first, your first is always gonna be different from your second. So you got one kid that's calm and you got one kid that's over enthusiastic. Like my son, August, Lord have mercy. He is, well, it could be because he about to turn two, but he is my energized bunny. Like, my mom, my mom. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm like, and I look at my other son, I'm like, Zane, I cannot wait until you get older so you can play with your brother where I don't have to. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, my second highlight of my year was definitely my son. What about the lows? What was the lows? My lows. Leaving in 2022. Yeah, my lows was definitely my lessons for 2022. My lessons were pretty cutthroat and deep. I hit rock bottom at one point. You feel me? Like, it was a lot going on from my previous relationship that everybody, of course, saw on divorce court. So... I ended up leaving him in late 2021, but the problems he caused of like not paying stuff and stuff like that kind of caught up to me in 2022. So I literally like spent all my savings and all that other stuff trying to maintain and stay on my feet. But of course, it fell through. It felt through. I lost a lot, and I felt like I did even more by, like, a lot of more harm by trying to keep it up and instead of just letting it go. Like, my home situation, that's what it was. Like, let, let me ask you something about, about that, like, about the financial thing when you're in a relationship. Do you think that you should have, like, a joint account, a separate account, like... How you feel about that? Um, I definitely feel like if y'all have, well, first of all, if y'all don't live together, then no, I don't. Oh no, well, we talking about serious relationships here, like. Okay, yeah. like if it's like a serious relationship, <laughs> yeah. like say for instance, like. We talking about for play play. Like 
my boyfriend and I, like, if we were, well, we're not living together, but if we were living together and we planned on living together, I would definitely say, like, each of us should have their se our separate accounts, but when it comes down to bills, there should be an account for just bills. And, like, say, for instance, we both put money in there. Like, uh, we talk about, like, us putting money into that account for certain things. Like, if we plan on going on a trip or something, like, all right, so you save this much, I save this much, so that way we can put the money together and go on a trip type thing. I feel like everything should be equal. Everything should be half and half, or y'all should have some type of agreement. And I feel like... For me, that'll work better for me because it'll automatically come on my account and go to that account. Whereas it's not in my bank account at all because one thing about me, I'm a spender. Mm -hmm. I spend, I spend my money for real. Like I'm, I'm a Taurus. I like the finer things in life, <laughs> but I rather pay for the finer things in life myself. Like I don't need nobody else to pay for the finer things in life for me. I'm expensive to myself, but to everybody else, I'm real like simple and plain. Okay. But yeah, for sure. I definitely feel like if y'all have bills together and stuff like that and y'all have that communication about it, then yeah, go ahead and do that. But outside of that, no. What uh what uh relationship has had you gained in twenty twenty two? So my relationship with you was gained in twenty twenty two. That's lit. Um I reconnected with people like I felt like okay in 2021 I had a lot going on and I kind of like fell out with a lot of people only because of the simple fact that I was still childish like I wasn't as focused because a lot of my friends are either younger than me and then some are older than me and my older friends of course was already ahead on what they wanted to do with their life and stuff like that like Justin, like I've been friends with Justin for about five, six years now. And Justin was, he's older than me. So he's ahead. He already knows like what he wanted to do with his life. He got his life together, whatever, whatever. Like, of course, he had his childish moments. But at the time, you know, communicating with me, like, and I understand it, communicating with me because I was going through my childish ways wasn't beneficial to him. Like, it, it's, it's not... I felt like I regained the friendships of people that I feel as though was necessary. Like we all had the same goal. We all are, you know, business owners or people who are trying to make something of ourselves or just people there to come and support. You feel me? Like I lost the relationships that I didn't need to have and I gained the relationships I needed to have back. Okay. Yeah, that was going to be the next question. What was the uh, relationship that you got rid of in 2022? Yeah, it's a lot of people that I kept in contact with from like high school years and stuff like that. And I feel as though that that was unnecessary to keep because they were going through their childish ways now. And me kind of having my kids made me grow up even more. Like even though I grew up at a young age already, I still had my you know, I want to live how I want to live kind of vibe. And they're, they're going through that now. And I'm like, I'm 25, almost 25, bro. I can't, I, I'm not about to, no, I can't do this. Like, I plan on having my house and everything else. Like, I'm not doing this. So, oh, I did gain my, um, my friendship with Krishan back. We were. It's Krishan. Krishan Rock. Christian, blue face Christian? Yeah. You you want that friendship? <laughs> no, I listen, listen, listen. I gained that friendship back only because of the simple fact that, well, for one, we were friends in high school. Oh my god. Like, alright, how how was she? Alright, alright, I ain't gonna say how was she, but how is cause you know how she's painted in the media, but you know behind the scenes she might be a totally different person. So how that friendship with Krishan? Blue face rock. Honestly, I okay. So Krishan has became kind of a different person when she started dating Blueface, but she was pretty much the same. Honestly, like Just she wild. was very, she was very like sweet to herself, you know, kind of person. But then she had her moments where she was like. I'm Krishan, like, you know, like, standing up on 
cafeteria tables and all other stuff like telling people to vote for her and for prom queen and homecoming queen like you know did she win that you know i don't even remember i left the school at that time i left the school right before homecoming but i do like remember like her being the same person she is but you know she just gained a little more tendencies dating blue face and Honestly, I feel like every girl gets like that. Dated somebody toxic, you know? I don't feel as though it's so much. That's a female in general. I'm sorry. That's just us in general. So you said a female dating somebody toxic or a toxic female dating another toxic person? I don't feel like Krishan is toxic. You know? No. And let me tell you why. It's because, maybe it's, call me biased, maybe it's because I knew her before that, and I know how she was before that, and you know, as we get older, we grow into different people, we grow more into ourselves, and stuff like that, like, you know, it, our life molds us, because Sean had a lot going for her, she was doing the whole college thing for track, started getting into football and all that stuff before she started dating Blueface, you know? So I kind of feel like she wasn't, she she has her mind right. It's just that it gets misconstrued because he's in the picture, if that makes sense. Like, I'm not gonna lie, at a certain point in time, I was her, you know, like with my son's father. Not getting your tooth knocked out. Fighting, okay, now baby that, mamas and getting drunk and stealing cars and getting locked up and fighting and physical and now that your, your father getting knocked out on teeth. What? Okay, so what? <laughs> you go oh, what? You I'm like that? speaking based off of the Krishan that I know Yo. versus the Krishan that y'all know. Y'all see all of that? Yes, I I see that and I say to myself like, hmm. Okay, like I feel like you know you got to chill out, like you gotta relax, and I feel like in the back of her mind she knows that too. But it's something about love that drives. Is it love or is it clout? Ah. I feel like it started off that way. Started off cloutish, and now you think it's love. Yeah, I feel as though it started off as not so much clout for her. It was more so clout for him. Because when she was on his show, when she was on his show, she was being herself. 100%. That, Chris Charlotte, I know. Like, when she was up there fighting people because Chris Charlotte don't like bullies. And... Krishan is big on standing up to bullies, and that's just what she did. And that's how I saw her being on the Blueface Club. Like, that's just what it was for me. But I don't know. It's, I saw a lot wait. of her starting shit, and I don't know, man. A lot of drunk they don't shit. Show, they don't show everything. Just keep in mind, because in, even in the divorce court episode that they did. I know they don't they show, everything, show everything, but I'm, I'm still saying, though, like, Krishan is off the chain. No, she is. And then even after the show ended, it was like her own show just continued and it's like... Right. Now, that part of everything, I feel as though... I feel as though that at that point, everybody started to connect with Krishan. Like, that's when everybody started drawing themselves to And that's what I feel and like is the attention, bro. No, because without her on that blue face club thing, mm-hmm. it wouldn't have blown up as much as it and did. She, yeah, and it wouldn't I, have been I'm seasons not, after not, that. Listen, I'm not even debating that. Krishan definitely was the, the... But I'm just saying, maybe that attention and that clout went to her head. I don't And she so. don't want to leave that lifestyle. I don't think so. She don't want to leave that attention. I don't think you so. You saw how she was in high school. Yeah. Jumping on the table. That's somebody that wants that attention. Cause y'all know that she can get the attention. I'm listen, listen. I'm trying to tell you. Cause Sean knows and knew before when we was in high school that she can get the the attention that she wanted, regardless of what she did. She could have been a quiet person. She could have been a loud person, but Cause Sean was still gonna get her attention. That's just how it was. Whether or not it was from a few people or a whole bunch of people, 
high school is something that you go through and then you forget about after high school until you see that person later on in life and then you're like oh my gosh i remember when you used to do this 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 and this there's some people right? that don't that don't ever let go of high school yeah they, Boy, I was the up. I was the shit back in the day. Well, you know I played ball, city. I used to get bullied. <laughs> I used to get bullied in high school. I hated high school. Oh, but stop the bullying, losers. Yeah, and it was because I was doing stuff that they doing now, like being being different. Everybody gets bullied when you're different. Yeah, man. You could be the nerd. You could be the the guy. Kid, you feel me? The emo kid, like. And then people used to lie on me and make up situations to make me get in fights and make me get into altercations with people. And I'm like, bro, what did I do? I'm minding my business. <laughs> now it's really just like it's it's like like what we talking about is attention. So you was getting attention. They didn't know how to just say, yo, she's different and she got she got our attention. So I was modeling then and everything. So like, and people they don't know how to like, say they don't know how to say, yo, she's lit. So it's so the way they express it is by bullying you, picking on you. Like course. it used to be like girls that used to like me in high school and shit, but to show me how they like me, they used to do no dumb shit. But the crazy thing is, is like the same people that was bullying me is that when they got bullied, I was always standing up for them. Like, oh, see, yeah, I don't know see, about people, that. People <laughs> used to come to the classroom really wanting to fight. I ain't saving no more. That's trying. I mean, be, do, do but this was this me. was before this was before they started bullying me. Like, yeah. I had I had left and came back to that school, and when I came back to that school, because I was modeling and stuff, so it was like some things that I couldn't be in school for, yeah. but I was still doing the work, and then I had to take a placement test to be put back in classes and right. stuff like that. But um, when I got put back in classes and everything, like it was new people at the school, so I didn't know them too often. I didn't know them too much and stuff like that. So the girls was like coming to the classroom to beat this one girl up, and I was just like, listen, it's not working. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I was all oh, shut your boy. <laughs> no, but then I got the girl to calm down and leave her alone and stuff like that. <laughs> okay. and, walk, and she walked away like oh, she. A safety patrol is. <laughs> no, really, because the teachers used to sit there and watch everything go down. They didn't do nothing. Yeah, they don't so pay for that. Like, I was just like, bro, it's not like the girl didn't even belong in the class. Just walked in the classroom, like yeah. called her out. I'm like, bro, like it's not worth it. Relax, <laughs> it's not worth oh, it. Say, but yo, listen, man. Like I wasn't like that. Like I mean, I didn't condone this shit, but I also didn't was like. I just minded my business type shit. Like I had my own little crowd, my own little. You feel me? Yeah. See, but, I didn't like. I, I'm like Kashawn, I don't like bullies. I don't like, I don't mind. I didn't, like, I mind being bullied, but it so, didn't But, so the, but that comes, that comes, that when you throw yourself in the crossfire and shit, that shit, I mean, you gotta, you gotta kind of expect to take some blows and shit. I mean, you will get some people was, that's not gonna like you for that. It's crazy that the girl who wanted to fight the other girl that was in my class, she ended up actually being friends with me. And then the girl who I stood up for was one of the girls who eventually started bullying me. And I was just like, this is so backwards. Yeah, because she probably looked like, damn, you, you cool with the app. I don't, it wasn't even about that because eventually they became friends. I'm like, bro, this, I, uh, this, There was ops at that time. Come on, you know how that shit is. That shit's still like that. And then that same girl that, that I stood up like for that. is the same one that got me into an altercation where I ended up fighting. I'm like, bro, I ended up in the hospital with a concussion. But my boy, I was going. Like, I was going. Like, we was really in the cafeteria fighting, fighting. Damn. Nigga slumped you and that shit, man. No, like, what ended up happening was, like, you one hit of her... your head on the, on the floor or some shit. One of her homegirls had tricked me while, I, while we was fighting. And I mm. fell. My head hit the table, then it hit the concrete floor. So it wasn't even a one-on-one? No. Mm, mm, mm. Your little self. She was little too. She was uh, a little bit bigger than me. Oh man, y'all gotta stop that, man. 
Listen, man, we about to start recreating, recreating, <laughs> talk to our uh, 14 year old selves and shit. Like, yo. Bro, what? <laughs> I'm about to start a whole you know, bullying campaign going to you schools dig? and everything because it's getting out of control. Like, at least the only thing I had to worry about then was people trying to fight me, not coming to the school to shoot me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going down, like bro. That. It's going down. Like, it's getting worse, and yeah. I'm not. So we, man, fact, let's that we gotta put that on the list, man, to do twenty twenty three. Let's do some no bullying, um, obese world merch, and man, get that out to the schools and shit like that, man. Let's turn up twenty twenty three, man. For I'm real, definitely man. Sure. Let's turn up, man. And man, we we about to just really do it, you know, man. We gonna do what we're supposed to do with this shit. You feel me? Yeah, I'm here for everybody else, not myself. You feel me? Did you heard? <laughs> <laughs> Not the New York slang. Did you heard? I fuck with New York. Man, when last time you been back to New York? Bro, it's been a minute. And I was just telling my friends that I'll have to come back out there. Because I have a lot of friends out. A lot of my older friends are out in New York. And they all go get us. So I definitely got to go back out there. Listen. They hustle us. I love it. I'm going to give you a little quick story about the last time in New York. My man hit me. He said, listen, man, I need you to do some camera work for me. Type that, blah, blah, blah. We going out in New York and shit. A couple of days, blah, blah, blah. What you want? I said, all right. I'm, yeah, man, blah, blah. So we end up just going out there. Actually, the day that we supposed to go out there, I'm in the bed. The bed feel extra good. The heat on. Not the bed feel extra good. And I'm, I'm on tight type shit. You, you feel me? Like, I'm like, man, if this nigga don't call me, you feel I ain't getting up. But then something hit me like, yo, every time I go to New York, I, I bump into opportunity and shit. You feel me? Like, mm-hmm. that's just, that's just they, they whole, like, up there is all hustle for real. Mm-hmm. So, I, so I got up, you feel me? I got up, got just, you feel me? We ended up going out there and showing up. Boom, yo, put me in position, you know what I mean? Bing, 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 you feel me? opportunity and shit yeah man so yeah man i fuck with new york man it gave me that extra charge you feel me yeah because every time like i said when i was going out there i was going out there fucking with them scammers and shit like that you feel me like yeah like they like just hustling you feel me like them yeah. niggas hustling everything you feel me so yeah. yeah that's my connection with new york now i got family out there too not a lot like my aunts and cousins and shit I think I, I think got in, family in up Brooklyn, there. Either Brooklyn or Bronx. Probably Brooklyn. My first time going out there was when I think it was like my first time meeting my homeboy Justin. And I was in the studio with him. And so was my homegirl. And we were just chilling. Basically, got the works of how the studio worked by watching and everything. Then he connected me to a whole bunch of people. Like, I got to meet. Um, I got to meet another model out there. I got to meet um, a photographer out there. Um, I was partying with them and got put in motion for a couple opportunities of doing events out there, like modeling events out there. So it was pretty cool. I got introduced to a lot of people. And then uh, in LA, I got introduced to a lot of people too. I was pretty convinced that LA was not for me though. (laughs) Because (laughs) LA is more so like... I I hear from everybody, LA is kind of weird. It is. And you have to be weird to fit in. And I'm not a weird individual, unfortunately. Like, no offense to anybody who's living in L.A., but it's just, like, you got to be a weird individual to live out there and to, like, be able to fit in and make it out there. And I'm not I'm not with it. I don't move like that. But I did get to do, like, skits with King Vader. Um, he came from the DMV and moved out there. Got to work with uh, Splat. Um, a lot of basically like, like the guys who do like Instagram skits and stuff like that. I got put in a couple of their skits. It was pretty fun, and I kind of like opened up the doors for myself. 
um, and a couple of my friends in that field. So I feel like, you know, after being out there, I wouldn't stay out there, but I'd definitely go out there to do business and mm-hmm. then come back. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, like I said, them, them cities, New York, LA. But Atlanta is home. Atlanta is home? Atlanta's home. Okay, 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 okay. I got family in Atlanta too. You feel me? We used to go to Atlanta um every spring break when I was in high school and shit. Atlanta's the goal. Atlanta's where I'm trying to be at. Go. Yeah, Atlanta, yeah. Atlanta Atlanta's it yeah, Atlanta been popping for a while now and shit. So it's definitely a power hitter. One of them, another one of them hustle cities and shit. You go there and get your hustle yeah. on. Other than the scamming part, miss me with the scamming. But Not everybody scams, bruh. <laughs> what do you think everybody? taxes is, bruh? Who's everybody? Everybody, the government, you. I don't do it. Me. I don't do it. You never scam people. I don't know how to scam. I wish I did. Scam is basically just not paying the asking price. So you ever got anything for free? Maybe by doing a little wink, a little smile. I mean, somebody bought me a soda before. <laughs> and, and, what you, and what you had to do to get the soda? Nothing. Just ask. <laughs> Scam. She be scamming, man. I don't. like. I you a scammer know, when I see one. You want to know what's real crazy? <laughs> I've, I've always been like my mother. My mother was like, if you don't ask, you can't receive. You ain't never get no free stuff from just being pretty? Yeah. Scamming, bro. You using your looks to, to to not pay the asking who, price. Who said that I was using my looks? If I you using ask, it? If, I just said if your eyes open, question. if your eyes is open, you are using it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking a question. Like, can you give me something? <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, nah, we're not just talking about that soda. But you got free stuff because of your looks. Opportunities. No. I've never gotten opportunities because I was pretty. I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe you, maybe you just oblivious to what the fuck is going on around. <laughs> I've never gotten free stuff because I was pretty. I've gotten free stuff because I'm a hustler. Scam. No, yeah. it's not a scam. Not because not because I'm a hustler in that kind of way, but I'm a hustler because they know that I can help them make money. Yeah, so what you did was you learned a way not to pay the asking price. What you gonna do is all right, I'ma just It's not like I didn't instead ask. of me paying money, what I'm gonna do is all we gonna do is uh trade services. You feel me? It's not like I ain't asked though. You listen. You acting like you don't know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. You I don't know what I'm doing because I all I like. ask is, it's just like it's like what photographers when they come to me and they like, hey, you, can I shoot you? And I'm like, you gonna pay me? And they like, you know, it's a TFP, depending on how your pictures how are. How good it is, you feel me? And your base. Yeah. It gotta be beneficial to me because if it's not, then the court the answer. So now, be if you if you if you if you wasn't attractive, if you didn't look good, you think somebody just wants you to be their muse? If you want me to answer that honestly, <laughs> you want me to answer that honestly, yeah, because I've been seeing a lot of photographers work with people. They probably struggling photographers, but let's, but let's keep it real. If they really want to get out there, they want to, yeah, man, they're going to get something that that look good. You feel me? They're going to, yeah, man, right? <laughs> I don't know. Like, on my on my um Instagram, you know, on my uh, Explore page and stuff like that, I guess because of my algorithm, I guess, I don't really see too many ugly girls popping up on my chair. They might all look alike and shit, but they ain't really too many ugly girls popping up with my judge. Like, you got to really be searching for ugly girls for them to just be in your uh, explore page like that. I done seen some photographers with some unique muses. It's probably real. It's like a small percentage. Like, it's like a niche. You know how some niggas like feet, feet porn and shit? 
It's like a niche. Some people like yeah, man. Oh, right. oh, that's a good question. So, have you ever dealt with an unattractive male? Maybe just because he, yeah, man, he got a good personality, or maybe got some money or something. Mm-hmm. Personality. See, I've never been a money chaser. But see, you messed with somebody that, that was funny looking, right? Kinda of disappointed because, about that one. <laughs> but I like that you're honest, cause we all got something funny on our resume. <laughs> I got a couple funny things in my. A head. couple? More more than a handful? Yeah. You mess with more than five ugly niggas. See that's your niche then. What? Just like them photographers, some photographers got yeah, man. That's they niche. No. Your niche is ugly. <laughs> no, it's not. Cause hold up, we not you about to play. You more than five ugly Wait. niggas. Cause now, now he trying, now he trying to play. No, play. I'm, I'm obsessing what no, you just told cause, hold me. Up, Cause now he trying to play. Hold up. Because <laughs> that isn't what is. Everybody who knows me knows. You that call the niggas funny, look. I am. I, I, I do. But, I they, them, but you know, they had a good personality or something you really liked about them, but that's your niche. It's not my niche. More than five funny looking niggas? Are we talking about like even high school relationships? Bro, just the niggas you messing with, period, bro. Like, I done mess with, the, the, I done mess with like three ugly that, girls my whole my, life, bro. Like three. If you saying that, then my niche is <laughs> tall, light skins with tattoos. That's not well. Then if that's your niche, right? Then the majority of niggas that you mess with would be. They are. So even if they funny looking, long as they tall, light skin, got tattoos. No, I've never, and they've always been pretty boys. I've never dated, like, when I'm in that category, I've never dated anybody that was like that, but still ugly. All right, when you're in that category, so, so you got, like, a mold, like, maybe you, I, I, one, you I try to I try to be nice and give people chances, because, you know, they Oh, like, my God, you a chance giver? Uh-huh. All right, here we you go. You can't so, be a... One of my exes, right? Okay, because that's the that's the light skin. Tall. Lick, lick his lips. Chris Brown playing in the background. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay, that's a typical. That's why I'm surprised you turned down uh, Breezy. That's that's not that, listen. That seemed like your type right there. He is my type. Exactly. That's but why. Listen. I mean, you fumbled the ball. It's okay. That's all right. My girl, uh, my ex did the same thing too. So both of y'all in the in the stands. <laughs> it's okay. Next go around. Both of y'all in the stands. That's like a one. Anyway, but. But all my yeah, exes don't try, yeah. look like that. Okay. Well, not all my exes. Most of my exes. Majority of my. The ones I lasted a long time with look like that. So, more than five ugly niggas. So, let's say seven. No. Six. You say more than five. It's about five. Uh, it's it's five. All right, so we say a handful of a handful of ugly niggas, and let's say you got a mm-hmm. handful of the other Chris Browns. No, so, it's been so more it's... than a handful of the Chris Browns. <laughs> <laughs> it's been more than a handful of the Chris Browns. Hold <laughs> on, oh, no, I ain't trying to give you too many bodies now. You feel me? Oh but... no 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 no! Hold up! Whoa 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 whoa! Wait a minute, because if we talk about bodies, I have not slept with everybody I do. <coughs> So you count a relationship even if you haven't slept with him? Yeah. Fuck out of here, man. Really? Mm-hmm. I was in a relationship for a whole four years, and one and a half of those years we didn't have sex at all. What y'all was like? Twelve? No. Y'all was in wrong? high school. He was like, I was dating him throughout my whole high school year. So y'all went to high school. Two thousand and. So y'all went to high school ago. No. He went to a different high school. Mhm. Okay. He lived in Louisiana. Oh, okay. So this is a pen pal. <laughs> no. Because he eventually moved. This is a MySpace relationship. He eventually moved with me. 
But he moved so that's why the fuck. Like, so but so when y'all moved, that's when it jumped off. So you can't. No, so, we didn't even have sex the moment he came out there. We was together for a whole year and a half. He came out there when we was like in a relationship for like eight months, and he came out here, and he stayed with me. Okay, uh, I'm trying to understand what's going on. Um, so like. He just wasn't having sex with you. He wasn't having sex at all. For a, a year. And a half. Mm-hmm. And a half. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this is a young this is a young nigga too. And it's proud. Yeah. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Cause we and, 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 and y'all and y'all didn't want that in the relationship. Like that wasn't a that wasn't a a, a factor in y'all relationship. No. This nigga went both ways. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he went. So y'all both hanging ways. around each other, kicking it, sleeping in the bed, going to movies. No, he lived with me and my family. Oh my god. So now this nigga is step brother and shit, and y'all oh, living, y- y'all living, y'all 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 in the same bunk bed and shit. He on top, y'all you down bottom, and y'all ain't never creeping in bed with each other. Or nothing. This is crazy. We ain't. This nigga dated have... dated her step brother. <laughs> we ain't have sex until we was almost two years. But y'all was dating the whole time. Or like secretly. No, we was dating the whole time. The whole time. My family knew that we was together when they moved him in. So, but they just said, they told y'all, don't y'all do shit. Don't you do... Oh, so he was threatened. I mean, no, he. my father wasn't like that. Like, he didn't threaten him or anything. He didn't need to threaten him. That was kind of... The way they raised me, it was disrespectful. So, I just wasn't that kind of person. That's interesting, man. Louisiana Creole. Mm-hmm. So, alright, you, 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 you give chance. You listen. I learned this the hard way too. I gave you chances because <laughs> I was trying to be optimistic. Listen, about the. People. I know that. I know that. But this, I learned this the hard way too. When you are attracting person, you can't give chances because them ugly motherfuckers start feeling they so. <laughs> no, and that's the problem, bro. I was being nice, like, and then I get that, and them I was ugly just like, motherfuckers start feeling they self and shit, start talking to you all type of ways and shit. I was like, boy, you trying to get? I learned the whole way too, man. Like. I, I really felt as though that I was being played with Jesus. at that point. <laughs> Once I gave you a chance and you do something like that, I feel as though that you were playing with me. Yo. Like when the only motherfucker like they do something to me, bro, like I don't even get mad. I just sit back and be like, how does motherfucker think they got the audacity to talk to me like that? Uh, Talk to me any old kind of way, and boy, I swear for Jesus, I wanted to smack. Like, just think about it. If if, if 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 we was like, say we was like the real world or some shit, and everybody watching our relationship, you think I'm gonna be proud of smacking this motherfucker around like like niggas like why are you smacking that ugly girl around like that? Why are they arguing like that? Like, Bro. you feel me? Like, I'm not doing that. Like, if if you ugly and shit. Come on, you showing me all the Chris Brown niggas now. Show me the fuckly niggas. That, no, this was the person I was in a four-year relationship oh, with. Oh, man, yeah, he go both ways. Look. <laughs> hey, yo, there's no way I'm living with my girlfriend. Oh, hell no. Oh, God. I've been fucking every day. Oh, God. Every day. I was just that kind of person. Yeah, like, y'all niggas was, was, no, it was fucking mornings and shit. No, it was just that <laughs> a lot of people 
I didn't have to do too much or put myself out there to be, you know, to get for that somebody, attention. Yeah, Yay. for somebody to want to stay and be with me. It That's was just how That's I was in general. You can't give no chances, bro. Like, I knew... Can't be a chancer. And that's my problem. I give people chances. So and for, for 2020, 2023, no chances. Can we do that? Well, I mean, I'm in a relationship right now. So no, I'm just talking about just know. period. Like, people taking, <laughs> people asking you for stuff. And, you know, people taking advantage of your friendship. Mm -hmm. 2023, we doing no chances, man. Okay, no and chances. Man, I'm telling you, you see how they treat us when we give them chances. Bro. They shit on us. To all the attractive people out there, you listen to me. Not you listen to me. <laughs> you were created this way for a reason. Mm -hmm. Don't feel like you have to be humble. Don't feel like you got to turn down and dim your light. You was born like this. You was blessed like this. God knew this because he knew if he created you like this. Now, if you he, look good, man. He don't mean it, y'all. Listen, if you look good, embrace that. You feel me? Don't turn down, man. Like, turn up. Use your advantage. That could be your advantage in, in, in your company. That could be your advantage in sports or whatever fills you in. Just You got to use whatever advantage you got. It's the world we live in, man. Mm -hmm. Don't be a chancer. You bless people who come around you. You bless them with your presence. Don't give them a chance to try to ruin it. So that's all I gotta say, man. We doing no chances 2023. We going up all 2023 OB's world, you know. And man, I'm supporting everything, man. We supporting everything this year. We backing up everything this year because we coming with nothing but pressure and more pressure and more pressure to the point and the cold will turn to diamonds. Like, we not playing. But thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for listening to the first episode of 2023. Kind of like a little wrap up of 2022 and a little bit of outgrown questions. But I definitely appreciate everybody who supported through 2022 when I did start and supporting now. And we will be having more episodes on the way soon. So just stay tuned. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and send it to your grandma and your grandmama's grandma and then your auntie's grandma and then your mama's baby sister. We need all of that. We need all of you. You don't do that after I do the claps and shit, you feel me? It's all good. Thank <laughs> you.